Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my TBR for Polarthon. So Polarthon is a week-long readathon that is hosted by Jade from JD Ray Reads. I will link her channel and her announcement video in the description below. And it runs from February 6th this year to February 12th. And there are three paths you can take up the mountain. There are obviously two teams. And I'm going to be doing Team Explorer's Path, but the third path is that you could just read five polar fantasies. So you wouldn't have to fulfill any prompts. They just would have to be polar fantasies, which are fantasies which have some sort of polar theme to them. But I am on Team Explorer, and our team leader is Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. I'll link his channel below as well. So basically, I went through my books, and I didn't have a team in mind. I was like, I just want to see what I have on my shelves and... I had more books that kind of felt like they fit the Explorer's Path than either of the other two, so that's why I went with Explorer. So the first prompt for Team Explorer is to read an adventure, and for this I'm going to be reading Rise of the World Eaters by Jamie Littler. This is the third and final book in the Frostheart series, and I'm going to assume based on the first two books that we're going to see Ash go on another adventure in this one. I have absolutely loved this series, and it is one of Gavin's favorite series, so it felt very appropriate to put on my TBR for Polarthon, and I'm just really excited to see how Ash's journey ends, because this is the last book in the trilogy, and with the way book two ended, I want to pick this up now, and I haven't had time to get to it, so I am so excited to have a reason to have it on my February TBR. So the next prompt for Team Explorer is Cold Word in the title, which can also be the series title, and for this I'm going to be reading Rise of the World Eater by Jamie Littler, because the name of the series is Frost Heart. And, well, I think frost counts. That That is a cold word. I will say, I have a very hefty TBR in February. But if I can swing it, I might end up reading the Winter House Mysteries for this. Because, to me, winter is a cold word. But, because I can double up on this, and it is a pretty chunky book, and let me tell you, if you watch my Phase 10 Chooses My TBR video, you will see that I have... Like I said, quite the hefty TBR. I'll, I'll link it below if you'd like to check it out. But I figured this was a good time where I could easily double up on a prompt. So we'll see how I'm feeling that week. If I can squeeze in the Winter House Mysteries without completely throwing off my TBR for February, I might do it. But for now, my choice for Adventure and Cold Word in the title is Rise of the World Eaters, the third book in the Frostheart series. Next up for Team Explorer is Foiled Cover. And for this, I'm going to be reading The Girl, The Cat, and The Navigator by Matilda Woods. And there is foiling on the letters of the title. And the stars are foiled. And it looks like her telescope is foiled. So there's a lot of foiling on this cover. So I didn't know much about this other than that it had foil on the cover. And I remembered when I did my haul that I said it might work for Polarathon. So the inside says, Set sail aboard the Plucky Leopard for an adventure of myth and marvel among the ice caps. So the ice caps are why I'm thinking this might have a polar setting. But I don't know... For sure, seeing as I haven't read it. Curious pin bright Una Brit dreams of a life of excitement on the wild waves. She has read stories of a mysterious magical creature called the Nardu, who swims through the stars at night and decides to stow away on her father's ship to track one down. But her time on the storm-tossed sea is fraught with danger. There's a mutinous crew, a sabotaging ship's cap called Barnacles, and a hungry creature of the deep awoken after a long sleep. So this sounds like it's going to be an interesting book, and like I said, Ice Caps may be polar, but I won't know until I read it, and I'm very, very curious about the ship's cat barnacle, so looking forward to checking this out during Polarathon. Next up, I have Icy Magic, and for this I'm going to be reading Sky Song by Abby Elphinstone, and this says, The snowy kingdom of Erkenwald was once a magical place until an evil ice witch cursed the land and began stealing the voices of the kingdom's people to increase her powers. So the reason I think this has icy magic is because an evil ice witch reminds me of, like, the Snow Queen, and the Snow Queen would have icy magic, so I'm thinking that might be where it comes from. But, again, haven't read the book, so I'm not 100% sure. Aska is one of many prisoners of the Ice Queen. Aska, with no memories of her past, only knows that she cannot allow the Ice Queen to take her voice, that it might be special in some way. When young inventor Flint sneaks into the Ice Queen's palace in an attempt to rescue his mother, he ends up rescuing Eska instead. Together, Flint and Eska must journey to the Nevercliffs and beyond in search of an ancient, long-forgotten song with the power to end the Ice Queen's reign and return voice back to the people of Erkenwald. 
This is the story of an eagle huntress, a boy inventor, and a wicked queen with a castle made from ice. But it's also a story about finding a place to belong, even at the farthest reaches of the world. So this sounds like it's going to be a fun story. Definitely a polar fantasy. And I think that there being an ice queen who has magic will definitely count as icy magic. So looking forward to checking this one out and seeing what Eska and Flint get up to. And then the last prompt is to just read a polar fantasy. And for this, I'm going to read Ember and the Ice Dragons by Heather Fawcett. I know that Jade has read this and really enjoyed it. So I know it's a polar fantasy. And it says, Ember St. George is a dragon. At least she was before her adoptive father, a powerful but accident-prone magician, turned her into a human girl to save her life. Unfortunately, Ember's growing tendency to burst into flames at certain temperatures, not to mention her invisible wings, is making it too dangerous for her to stay in London. The solution ship Ember off to her aunt's research station in frigid Antarctica. Though eccentric, Aunt Myra takes getting used to. Ember quickly feels at home in this land of ice storms, mischievous penguins, and 24-hour nights. She even finds herself making friends with a girl genius called Nisha, and a mysterious orphan named Moss. Then she discovers that Antarctica is home to the Winter Glass Hunt, a yearly tradition in which rare ice dragons are hunted for their jeweled scales. Furious, Ember decides to join the hunt to sabotage it from the inside. But being an undercover dragon isn't easy, especially among dragon hunters. Can a 12-year-old fire dragon survive the dangers that come her way in the Antarctic wilderness and protect the ice dragons from extinction? So I love the fact that we're going to be getting dragons in this book. When I bought it, I got it because I knew it was Polar Fantasy and had planned to read it for Polarathon, so... Really happy to have this on my TBR and to be finally checking it out. So this is my TBR for Polarathon. Are you participating in Polarathon? If so, what team are you on and what book are you most excited to be reading? All of my social media, including my Discord, are linked below if you'd like to come chat with me about Polarathon or books in general. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me polar emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!